Hey guys, Mixed Mania Girl here. So in this video, we're going to be doing a resin beach sea turtle. And I'm using Stone Coat Countertops Art Coat. And this one comes in part A and B. And of course, follow all directions on the bottle, including the safety instructions. Make sure you read safety data sheets of any resin that you're going to use. But this particular one is mixed equal parts with resin and hardener. I like to put the hardener in first because it's a little bit thinner. You can probably see as I pour them into the bottles, um, I put the resin, which is thicker, on top. And that just helps me to mix them together properly. Now these you can mix with a uh, drill and like a paint mixing paddle, or you can just mix it by hand, which is usually what I do unless I'm mixing up a really, really large batch. You only need about three ounces of resin per square foot. I'm mixing up a little bit more though because I'm gonna be using some of this for some other projects. So just very, mix it very, very, very thoroughly. Scrape the sides, scrape the bottoms, and then now we're gonna go ahead and mix in the colors. I am using Alumilite's dyes here. I have ocean blue and white, and then I'm gonna be using some of the poly color bright blue green mica powder. Um, the dyes are very concentrated, so you only need maybe about a drop or two, depending on how much resin you're using, of course, but usually that is sufficient. Otherwise, um, yeah, it's, it's just really concentrated, so go slow. You can always add more. You can't take it back out. And then um, mica powders, not really as much of an issue. But I always add uh, maybe five to 10% of my colorant per uh, to the, you know, in ratio to the resin. If you add more than about 15%, you run the risk of your resin not curing properly. So don't add too much. And remember, you can always add more. You cannot take it back out. So just get your colors mixed in thoroughly especially the mica powders. Those can take a little bit longer to mix in fully, I've noticed. So scrape the sides, scrape the bottoms, and just mix them in really thoroughly so that you don't get any unwanted effects of, you know, clumps of mica powder or something like that in your resin piece. The dyes are a lot easier to mix up, I've noticed. All right, I've got my colors all mixed up. So you can probably tell here that I have pre-painted this with some spray paint. Now this is a wooden sea turtle, it's 12 inches. And um, I painted it with matte paint and primer in one spray paint. I used Krylon specifically because that's what I had, but you can really use any brand that doesn't matter as much. So on the sand portion, I just put some clear resin because I've got that undertone of color. And on top of that, I'm actually gonna be adding real sand. And up at the top here, I'm adding in my colors, my blues. So I started with that blue dye at the top and then just go ahead and spread it out. And then underneath that, I've got the mica. Now the mica has that metallic look with different depths because of the metallicness of it whereas the dye is um, more of a solid color and it's a little more transparent as well. So I kind of blend these together a little bit just using my hands. And then um, once we get in the, there with the heat gun, they'll blend it even more. So take some white and put it where you want your waves to go. Do not overdo it with the white. It can be easy to overdo it, but then you end up with a project that looks a little more like clouds than waves. So I'm just putting one kind of layer underneath all the blue and then one in the blue. And then I'm gonna get in here with my heat gun and go ahead and just blend these blues together and then start pushing the white out. This is an Amtake heat gun. Uh, and there are quite a few different heat guns that are awesome. You can find them in my Amazon store. Uh, this has so many different settings and it goes up to like a thousand degrees or something crazy like that. But I go ahead and start blending in the blues and then just push that white around. This is all a matter of personal preference, how you like it to look. 
I don't do it necessarily the same as everybody else and that's okay. I'm always very happy with the outcome of my project. Now after your initial layer, it's really just up to you to just play around with it and make it how you like it. There are a couple options. One is to actually let it dry and then come back and do a second layer on top, which can add some amazing depth. Or you can kind of do like I'm doing here and just go in and add maybe a little bit more detail or a little more control on your colors now that you've gotten that background a little bit more blended. So I added in some more white and then now I'm actually going in with a little bit more of the blue because I wasn't totally happy with how that blue came out. It looked a little too um, evenly colored, I guess. I wanted to add a little more depth of color. So... <laughs> Um, went back in here with a little more blue and made that kind of a little bit crazier and That's just my my personal preference and what I like Now you don't have to use a heat gun with your project You can use a torch or you can actually use both I generally with beaches specifically like to use both so you can see me here with my torch and that's to get rid of air bubbles and then also I've just noticed can give you a little bit of some different effects with the resin than the heat gun. The heat gun will move it around the torch, not necessarily. So I tend to use both in my projects. Now, once I was happy with that background, um, I went ahead and grabbed some sand and I like to put it in one hand and then use the other hand to kind of sprinkle it around like I'm salting <laughs> my food or something like that. This is real sand that I got from a beach you can actually buy sand as well, totally up to you, or you could use fake sand. There are also even spray paint products that look like sand, it's amazing. So there's a lot of options, but in this case, I'm using real sand. This is actually um, a piece for someone specifically, and um, so I'm doing it to their specifications. You don't need a lot. Make sure you control where it goes. You don't want it to go into your water or anything. And now that I'm done with the sand, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of clear resin over the top of that. It will soak up the resin underneath, so you don't have to worry about that too much. But I am going to be adding some seashells. So I wanted a little resin on the top, and then there was a section where the resin was kind of thin. So I wanted to add a little more resin on top of that section. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put the seashells in that clear resin that I just put on there. Don't overdo it if you're going to add seashells, and these are just little tiny baby ones. One um, suggestion is to just add an odd number. So don't add um, two or four or six, rather do three or five or seven. That's not a rule or anything. I've just found that for me personally that looks better. I don't know if there's any like <laughs> reasoning behind that, but that's generally how I do it. I just add an odd number. After I was happy with how my seashells looked, I went ahead and just drizzled a little bit of the clear resin on top of them. That just helps to make sure that they definitely stay in place. Now you can put a clear coat over all of this after it's dry, um, but you actually don't need to. So this is how it looks without a clear coat, completely dry. You can see it's got Beautiful layers of depth, that metallic, the mica has a little bit of sparkle. Um, those waves spread out a little bit more. And I think the sand and the seashells look awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this project. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.